I'm here today with Kentucky Appalachia Outdoor Painters at Richmond Battlefield Park in Richmond, Kentucky. An overwhelming Confederate victory when the Confederates pressed into Kentucky during the Civil War. It's a beautiful day and my first day out in several weeks still feeling really weak and go to see how much I can do, but kind of running on empty with health issues that occasionally kick my butt and then I rebound. So we'll see how it goes. Well, first I want to tell you a little bit about the historic site where we're painting the Civil War battlefield in Richmond, Kentucky. The brick home in the background actually served as a hospital for the troops during the battle. And uh, there are even some either bullet holes or mortar holes uh, in the house. Uh, at the uh, next part, after we see all this history of the battlefield, I'll talk with you about some experiences we all talked about and shared at lunch uh, that are pretty valuable for lessons learned. I've now been on more than 100 outdoor paint outs in the last three years, and there's a lot you learn from that experience, and I'll get into those details later. So the significance of this battlefield is that the Union Army had advanced to Tennessee at this point, and we're hoping to press south, and General Edmund Kirby Smith had other plans. Uh, the Confederate general made a bold move into Kentucky. It went deep into Kentucky following along what is now I-75 up to Richmond, Kentucky. And the battle that happened here, he had 19,000 Confederate troops. The Union had about nine or 10,000 troops and they were absolutely decimated. It was a huge Confederate victory and more than half of the Union troops were either killed or uh, captured. They would meet again, uh, the survivors, uh, not too long afterwards at the Battle of Perryville, and that was where the Union finally won and once and for all pushed the Confederates out of Kentucky for good. So we're on pretty bloody ground here from 160 one years ago and uh, uh, kind of a sad and sacred site but for us it was nothing but peace and a beautiful fall day and uh, as artists uh, we didn't have any battles at all we've we've learned uh, and are progressing well and I'll show you the great number of scenes we had to choose from and what I scoped out for two sketches that I hope to turn into studio paintings during the winter months. So here's my walk around the property and it's pretty tempting to do a old barn like that which is just down the lane here. A couple other people chose to do that but for me the first step of plain air painting after all these uh, hundred times of practicing is to try to find something that not only looks good and makes a good painting but also is easy uh, is possible to simplify and that barn's pretty complicated but look how complicated this would be to try to do the house I thought about zooming in to those columns where the flowers are and instead of showing the whole house just zoom in tightly to the way the light hits the door and the light and shadows there but uh, decided against that there's the barn up close and that's a lot of detail that's a lot of work and I decided that was too much here's another angle of the house and again ruled it out too complicated Got to keep it simple. I'm really only good for about two hours and then I'm mentally exhausted from uh, the paint out experience. So I'm looking for things that I can do quickly. And uh, 
Uh, this was my second choice, and I'll show that from a different angle, and that'll be the second sketch that I do, because that one was a little, a uh, little more simple, and I thought would make a, a good painting. So first, I'm going to show you the kit and how it gets lighter and lighter with experience. So here's my kit. Packing as light as I can. Here's what all's in here. A couple of specialty colors of pastel, just a few sticks. Kind of a sample pack. Here's my gouache. Paper towel. Pastel pencils. Carba Carbothello Stay Below is the brand name. Sketch pad. Pastels and pencils and brushes, miscellaneous everything. That's the heaviest thing right there. Water for spreading the pastel or cleaning up. So I got all this beautiful architecture, scenery, buildings, history and that, but I love this scene off in the distance of the Appalachia Mountains. The blue of that, simpler scene for me to try to do. So we'll see how it goes. I'll keep trying to show my sketchbook to show progress. So the first thing I did was sketch in those major shapes, the shadows, the hills, the road, the path, all of those. And I did that in, with pastel pencil. And now I'm using a stick of soft pastel to lay in the sky. And as long as you're doing light touches, the pastel sticks well, even to a cheap sketchbook paper. You see me now using the gouache and this container has kept this gouache damp for almost a year uh, and only one mound of paint is starting to show mold for the first time but that doesn't bother anything and especially when you're outside there's no hazard with that but uh, the gouache now goes on it's it's watercolor but it's opaque so you can go over layers uh, which you can't do quite as well with watercolor and uh, that's what you see me using right now is uh, the uh, opaque watercolors or gouache to again lay in the major shapes I'm starting by going after the dark in the tree line and you also see me do the shadows in the grass as well I really like the long shadows coming from the left. You can't see the row of trees to the left, and I don't show it in the sketchbook, but you do see the long shadows with the light that comes through, and I really like that. That kind of caught my eye. But obviously what I've chosen is a scene that I thought would be simpler and easier to paint, and it was. And I'm not after a masterpiece. I'm just after laying in the major shapes and, and having that scene captured. And more importantly, showing the colors that photography does not pick up. Uh, no photo will ever show the colors as well as you can see from life. And that's the advantage of outdoor painting. And so what I'm trying to get is how to simplify the scene, the major shapes and the colors and then use this sketch as a possible future studio painting. I can relive and think about how beautiful this fall sunny day was 
in the winter when it's cloudy or overcast or maybe even snowing and I could be painting this scene in the studio probably in oil and probably on canvas or canvas board and so that's a big lesson from outdoor painting I'm not after finished painting here and it may look like a, a third grader did it. it might look a little bit cartoonish but it has all the information that I need to do a more detailed and and finished piece. Uh, it still won't be a masterpiece because I'm doing it. <laughs> but uh, it'll have the information I need and I'll have the video and reference photos to look at as well. And uh, that is a worthy goal of outdoor painting. I wanted to show you this little sample set of greens and it's in a variety of different pastels. Uh, it's a lot more affordable. It's just a sample set, one color. And I buy all my pastels from Dakota Pastels, an American company out west. I believe it's in Oregon or Washington State. And they're reasonable on prices, but they have every imaginable brand and paper and everything and just a good place to buy from. I'm going to finish up with a time lapse and speed up the last uh, 15 minutes or so of this sketch and show you the final version. So this was sketch number one and it took probably about half an hour or so and I'm happy with the result and I uh, think I have a good reference for a future painting. Wanda was sitting right next to me as I did the mountain scene and she chose my second favorite thing which is what I chose as my second sketch so we painted close by each other deep in concentration we didn't talk a whole lot we were too busy concentrating so there's the uh, picture of the cottage and I love the light and shadow on that window and the different colors of brick with light and shadow. So here's my pastel pencil sketch to get the first layer in and here's what I finished up with. So I just show you quickly the beginning and end on that second sketch. Our best times are when we gather for lunch and have the discussions like our part of this earlier video. Not everybody was in that group shot. Some of them were still painting and came to lunch late. I never come to lunch late. Here's uh, the work of the group, what they ended up with for the day. And it's always amazing to compare the different level of skill and ability and those who have practiced for ages and also how they can view the same scenes differently for a painting. Please click like or subscribe. It really helps to spread the video and helps this channel. And for more information and to see more than 100 of these videos that I've done through the past three years, go to rogersnell.com. Thanks again.